Hey guys, 2005 Dora here. That's right, this is how I used to do my makeup back in the day. I don't know what it was, I don't know if I was feeling nostalgic or something, but I was just like, I wanna do my makeup like I used to. And then this happened, and next thing I know, I was like, mm not going back. So January was an amazing reading month for me. I read a total of seven books, three physical copies, two ebooks, and two audiobooks. I say that is a fantastic way to start the year. So without further ado, let's just get started. The first book I finished in January was What Doesn't Kill Her by Carla Norton. This book is about college student Reeve, and when she was younger, she was kidnapped and found years later. Reeve has created a totally new life for herself, but then her captor escaped the psychiatric facility he was at and now he's on a journey to reclaim what's his leaving behind a trail of dead bodies Reeve has blocked out most of her memories with her captor but then she realizes that she's part of a key to getting him back so she has to try and remember I gave this book a 73% now when I first read this book I had no idea it was actually the second novel in a series I decided to continue without reading the first book and I honestly don't think I missed anything this book was good at giving us the backstory as to what happened with Reeve and her captor. But I believe the first book is about Reeve helping another captured girl that was saved. I honestly don't feel like I missed anything without reading the first book. Now, I did read this via audiobook. I absolutely love the narrator. She did a fantastic job. She was really good with voices and accents. I'm not gonna lie. I actually picked this book, one, because that synopsis was really good, and two, because Washington State was the setting. So I was like, heck yeah, I'm gonna read it. I mean, there's not a lot of books set where I live, but just knowing that they would choose Washington in general, like Twilight, I think what really hooked me onto Twilight and what I really loved about Twilight is that it was set in Washington and Forks, no less. And I've yet to visit Forks in all my life from being a Twilight fan, I have not visited Forks. That's on my bucket list. Overall though, the story was bland. I pulled through because I didn't want to start the year off with a DNF, so I decided to give it a 73%. The next book I read was I Am Not Your Perfect Mexican Daughter by Erika L. Sanchez. I gave this book a 70%. This was one of my most anticipated read for 2018, and I was thoroughly disappointed. Pointed. I have a very long slash detailed review on Goodreads, so if you want to check it out, my link is down in the description box below, but I'll give you a little bit of a gist. I was really disappointed. I felt like my childhood was insulted, therefore I was insulted. I felt like my mom was insulted, and when you insult my mom, you know we're not going to have a very good relationship. And most of all, I felt like this book dealt with the worst case scenario in Mexican families. I am not saying that there aren't any Mexican families who think and believe the way that Julia's parents do. I felt like everything was dramatized and everything was worst case scenario. And I felt like the author was saying that all Mexican families were this way. Overall, I think it was a stereotypical kind of Mexican book. Like I said, I was just disappointed. I wanted to like it. I really wanted to like this book, but it, I just... Mm -mm. I mean, the only reason why I gave it a 70% though was because I absolutely love how mental illness was portrayed. It showed positivity into getting help into taking medication for mental health and I think the author did that beautifully. So I think this book made the most disappointing reads of 2018. We just started the year and I already have one. The second audiobook I listened to for the month of January was Siege and Storm and I gave it an 80%. I enjoyed it better than the first one and I think it's because I'm starting to understand the concept of the world and I think now that I'm understanding it everything seems more exciting. I love how the relationship between characters is seen it's never forced. What I didn't like about Elena though is how she treated Mel. She just took advantage of him and his love for her. She assumes that because Mel is in love with her that he's gonna follow her like a puppy dog. And I also believe that a lot of the issues that went on in this story could have been fixed by Alina actually trusting Mel and talking to him about what's going on. The next book I read was City of Bones by Cassandra Clare. I'm actually doing the Shadowhunter Chronicles read-along with Emma from Emma Books. And the live show for this book is on Saturday. Since I live in Pacific Standard Time, for me it's at 3 p.m. But if you're in the Eastern side, for you it's at 6 p.m. I gave this book an 87%. I absolutely love the characters. I absolutely love Jay's. I love the witty banters. I love the sarcastic 
comments. Not just Jace's sarcastic and witty banter, but all the characters. They're all sarcastic. All the witty remarks, all the sarcastic answers made it bearable to read through all the information dump that was going on in the first part of this novel. If you want to learn more about the Shadowhunter Chronicles read-along, I'll leave Emma's video down in the description box below. The next book I read was Keeper Safe by Sophie Hanna, and I gave it an 89%. While on vacation, the receptionist gives this woman the wrong key to the wrong hotel room. When she walks in, she realizes that the hotel room is occupied by a man and his daughter. Later on, though, she finds out that the little girl she saw in the hotel room is a little girl that's supposed to be dead. I really enjoyed this novel. It was great. But a few things I didn't like about the main character was that she was a hypocrite. And the other thing I absolutely hated about this book was that I felt like the author was trying to sell me the resort that this woman went on vacation. I mean, the resort is fictional. And I understand that she was trying to set up the resort. The first part, I believe like the first seven chapters is just describing and telling us how amazing this resort is. I mean, I'm all for setting up the place. The more description, the merrier. But there's a line between setting the ambient and selling you a vacation spot. The plot was revealed early on in the novel, and once that happened, it was torture to finish the rest of the book. The next book I read was The Hate You Give by Angie Thomas, and I gave it a 95%. The Hate You Give is about our main character, Star Carter, and she witnesses her best friend being shot by a cop. I absolutely adored this book. It was truthful, it was eye-opening, and it was beautifully written. And I feel like the main character's voice was established perfectly. I saw everything vividly. This book was very serious, very dark, but in those serious dark moments, there was also that little bit of comedy relief. And Angie planned it so well that it never felt out of place. And the last book I read in January was Lie to Me by J.T. Ellison. My god, it took me like three freaking weeks to learn her name. I gave this book a 91%. It was a fantastic read. I was mind blown at the end. There are so many lies in this book that it will keep you guessing till the very end. I never expected it to go in the direction that it did and I was really, really surprised by it. So kudos to JT for catching me off guard. This is an adult psychological thriller and it contains crude sexual language and abuse. Lie to Me is about a man whose wife goes missing. But is she really missing? Because she did leave behind a note saying, leave me alone, I need some time don't come looking for me. So why is the husband all riled up thinking that something might have happened to her if she left a note saying that she was all right? Dun dun dun! So those are all the books I read in January. Let me know down in the comments below how many books you read in January, which one was your favorite, and which one was your least favorite. Thank you guys for watching. Please make sure to give this video a big thumbs up if you liked it, and subscribe if you want to see more of my face, and I'll see you in my next video. Bye!